Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Balancing Act. We're so glad you're here. I'm Julie Moran. And I'm Olga Villaverde. All right, I have a question for you at home. I know you're not. Are you sleepy? <laughs> She's never sleepy. Not getting enough shut-eye? Well, today we might have a solution to help you get a better night's rest. And also, we're going to go into our Behind the Mystery series. Great segment today. We're going to be learning more about a rare form of anemia. You've heard of anemia, right? I've heard of anemia, but since our show started researching this, there's more to be known about anemia. There is. There's one called Cooley's anemia or thalassemia. And let me tell you, it's really serious, Julie. It can be fatal if not treated early enough. Lots of people suffer from it, and we're hopefully focusing on this segment so one day we can find a cure. So great segment coming up. So important and great information and much to get to today. So the balancing act will start right now. Let's Stay with it. us. Thalassemia, or Cooley's anemia, is a genetic blood disorder that can be fatal if not treated early. However, the good news is there are simple tests that can show whether you are a carrier of the trait. Here to discuss more about that, plus share her own family's battle against this condition, is Amy Salento, vice president and a member of the board of directors of the Cooley's Anemia Foundation and a mother of a child living with this condition. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, Olga. Thank you for having me today. Thank you so much for being here. Before we talk about your son, because I know he has Cooley's anemia, yes. let's talk about what it is. Because when I hear anemia, and I'm sure our viewers out there, everybody knows what anemia is. But Cooley's anemia, hmm. I've never really heard of this. So Cooley's anemia is a little bit different. Okay. Usually with anemia, you have iron poor blood and you take iron and it perks you up. Cooley's anemia or thalassemia, it's a genetic blood disorder. And so it actually leaves the body without enough hemoglobin. Okay. The people who have it don't make enough hemoglobin. And hemoglobin is what carries oxygen through the body. It allows you to thrive. And so Cooley's anemia patients just don't have enough hemoglobin they require blood transfusions in order to thrive. Really? Yes. So, and I know one of the challenges of regular blood transfusions is sometimes an overload of iron. So how does that compare with this condition? Well, so Cooley's anemia patients, most of them are getting blood every two to three weeks. Oh, wow. And so they're getting one to two units of blood. So with that, you get a lot of extra iron. And the body doesn't release iron, it stores it in the organs, the heart, the liver, the pancreas, the pituitary gland. So it's significantly damaging. Um, many of the patients end up with heart problems later in life. They may go into congestive heart failure without even knowing it. Wow. Um, so patients need to remove iron, and the only way to do that is through taking medication that specifically targets the iron and pulls it out of the body. Now again, genetic or inherited? Well, it's both. It's both. So it's genetic and it's inherited. And when it comes to maybe certain regions, uh, specific regions where it is more prevalent, are there certain areas? So when the Cooley's Anemia Foundation started 60 years ago, most of the patients identified in the U.S. were Italian or Greek. They were from the Mediterranean. Hmm. However, there are patients from South Asia, Southeast Asia, the Middle East, who have the thalassemia uh, trait and, and have thalassemia major as well, the Cooley's Anemia. And, um, but it's not region specific. I mean, we're a melting pot. Anybody can have it. Absolutely, and let's talk about the trait and passing it on. Right, so if you have the trait, which I have the trait. Correct. My son's father has the trait. So when two trait carriers have a baby, there's a one in four chance that the baby will have thalassemia major, this major form that's called Cooley's anemia. There's a two in four chance that they just end up being a trait carrier like me. So if you're a trait carrier, you have smaller red blood cells. So you are identified through a blood test. If you have these smaller red blood cells, so your MCV, your mean corpuscular volume is under 80, then there's another test, hemoglobin electrophoresis. Very simple blood test. It is? Yes, absolutely. And it will identify if you have the trait. And then you would have further genetic testing to really identify the specific mutation. Now you mentioned the test is simple, which is great. Yes. Obviously you can find out early, and is early really important too? Well it is. If you're planning to have children, it's very important to know if you have the trait. I was not aware 
it was unfortunate. I had a low MCV every blood test I asked every time, but my hemoglobin isn't low, so nobody really thought, oh, you might have thalassemia, we should do that hemoglobin electrophoresis. So you said you didn't have you didn't know you had the trait. No. Obviously, it's a simple test. We all know that right now, but are there any kind of like symptoms that would alert anybody? So when you have the trait, often it's a very, very minor form, and you just don't know. You don't feel fatigue. You don't appear pale. You just don't have any idea. So it's really important to look at your blood test to understand if your MCV is flagged as low. There is a column that will say a flag. And then you just ask for the further test, the electrophoresis. And it's really important to create awareness. I want you to stay right there because we're going to talk more about Cooley's anemia and your son who also has it. But I know he's doing great, so we have a great story coming up. Stay right there. So stay tuned because after a quick break, we're going to continue our conversation with Amy and hear about her family's own daily battle against this serious condition and how they're working through it. So don't go away. The Balancing Act. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Before the break, we introduced you to Amy Salento, Vice President of the Cooley's Anemia Foundation, who's telling us about thalassemia, a genetic and serious blood disorder. Now the good news, there are ways to spot the trait through simple and routine blood work. Thank you for remaining with us. Oh, thank you. Let's talk about your son. What's his name? James. James. He has Cooley's anemia. He does, the major form of thalassemia. You obviously carry the trait. Anybody else in the family? Yes, so his dad is a trait carrier, okay. and we knew that his paternal grandfather had thalassemia minor, but no one really talked about it as a trait, and his father said it didn't affect him. Now, before the break, we talked about how there really aren't many symptoms. Uh, you were unaware of it, so how was your son diagnosed? So my son was diagnosed through a routine blood test. At a year of age, they look to make sure that children don't have lead poisoning, so <laughs> it's a good screen, and his hemoglobin was low. And so we started to dig deeper. We were actually very lucky. Most babies with Cooley's anemia, they need a transfusion in the first few months of life. Wow. Yeah. My son, it was two years before he needed a transfusion. When you heard the news as a mother, I can only imagine just some shock. I was quite, quite surprised. And, you know, again, I, I didn't know I was a trait carrier. I had no idea. No one ever validated my test results and looked deeper. So let's talk about James, uh, his treatment. What does he have to do? Does he take medications? Yes, so the first thing he does is he gets blood transfusions and he gets two units of blood every three weeks. Every three weeks? Every three weeks. But he's now 16, he's getting bigger, so we may have to go to every two weeks, which is really the norm for most patients. And that, that lasts how long? I've never done this. He goes somewhere and what? He goes to the hospital, he goes to an infusion center, and he spends the day. They draw his blood, they make sure there are no antibodies reacting, and then eventually we get some units of blood sent over and, and they start an infusion. And it's about one and a half to two hours for each unit of blood going into the body. Wow, but necessary nonetheless. Absolutely necessary. And then the other necessary piece is taking this medication to get rid of the excess iron. So he has to take that daily, not his favorite thing to do. However, it's critical. Physical activity, does it limit his activity or once he gets the transfusion, he does whatever he, he wants. He has a lot of energy when he gets a transfusion. <laughs> That's good. Um, he, he can do really whatever he wants. And the only thing is when you get that much blood, I just kind of suggest that he not run with the team that day. You know, sort of give the body a little time to, to integrate. Let's talk more about the Cooley's, Cooley's Anemia Foundation. Tell me more about it. So it started 60 years ago. A group of very concerned parents put together this organization. And the focus has been medical research and patient care, as well as consumer education, really letting people know, get the trait testing, here's what happens if you have the trait, how to be prepared if you're, if you're in the age of you know, reproducing, having children. And ultimately, hopefully, find a cure. Absolutely. Once they find a cure, and we pray for that, he will not need the medications or blood transfusions? Well, we're hoping that with the gene therapy, some sort of genetic intervention, he won't need transfusions at some point, absolutely. Excellent, again, it's a simple test, Yes. People can find out quickly. It's really important to find out early, right? Absolutely. Thank, Thank you so much for your time. Thank you if people want more information, where can they go to? Yes, so they go to the Cooley's Anemia Foundation website, www.thalassemia.org. Okay. Thank you for sharing your story. Good luck to you and your son. Appreciate your time. We also have a link to the Cooley's Anemia Foundation's website on our website. It's thebalancingact.com. That's thebalancingact.com.
You've heard that getting seven to eight hours of sleep every night is good for your health, right? But how many of us are actually doing it? I can't say I am. Unfortunately, many of us have a hard time falling asleep. Some people turn to prescription sleep aids for health and others are looking for a more natural solution. And here with some insight is Ben Blessing from NFI Consumer Products, creators of Eight Hour Sleep, and nutritionist Meryl Brandwine, and welcome. You know, I know NFI has developed so many great products like Blue Emu Cream and others, but what made you and what inspired you to develop a sleep aid? Well, at NFI, we, we are always creating products that help our consumers live better, whether it's Blue Emu or eight hours sleep. And uh, my wife and I have three kids. My youngest is four months, so sleep does not come easy to us. <laughs> uh, whether it's killing monsters in the uh, middle of the night, waking up for one last kiss with my four-year-old daughter, or making a bottle at 2 a.m., uh, insomnia attacks us all over our house. And so, but in the United States, there's 70 million people that have insomnia, so we're not the only people being affected by it. No. And so uh, we created this product to help people sleep better. If you're going to sleep better, you will have a better life if you get the seven to eight hours of sleep. Absolutely. And how is eight hours sleep different from other sleep aids on the market? Eight hours sleep is all natural, so we created a product that's not going to knock you out. Whether it's an over-the-counter medication or prescriptions, most of those are designed to knock you out in an hour. Mm -hmm. And we wanted a product that was going to gently put you to sleep. And we also combined it with melatonin, and our other two ingredients are for anxiety control, which is 5-HTP and L-theanine. Everyone gets anxious right before going to bed and thinking about the next day, what yep. am I gonna be doing? And so with our product, with the melatonin and the 5-HTP and the L-theanine, we're able to help our consumers fall asleep naturally uh, at their uh, at a faster pace. That's great. Meryl, I want to turn to you some of the benefits of some of the ingredients that are in the eight hour sleep, melatonin, 5-HTP. Um, tell me about some of these things Ben mentioned. Right, so melatonin uh, is a hormone that helps us regulate our circadian rhythm, our natural body clock to fall asleep, wake up, and it's also a powerful antioxidant. Uh, and L-theanine, you know, as was mentioned, and 5-HTP do help with relaxing and calming the body down and that anxious feeling that we uh, tend to feel. That's and uh, yeah, lemon balm, chamomile, all that, passion flower, also very calming. So it's a nice calming Oh, so it's all feeling. in there. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Then you mentioned that eight-hour sleep is a melt. It's not a pill. So how and when should we take it? So we usually recommend our consumers take it about two hours before they go to bed. Uh, it's a melt, so it does enter your bloodstream a little quicker, but as adults, we still need to do what we're supposed to do uh, about getting ready for bed. Uh, we feel like as we get older, we don't have to abide to the calm down law that we tell our children. Yes. <laughs> uh, we do still need to do that. And uh, as adults, it's usually cell phones and social media and television. You need to let your body and your mind start resting about two hours before bed, and you will get a good amount of sleep. Such good tips. You know, I think many people fall asleep with the television on, don't realize it's a problem. It sounds like eight hours sleep, though, works pretty quickly. Absolutely. If you let us use the melt to get in your bloodstream faster and you do our tips that we're telling you to do, you're going to fall asleep faster and you're going to enter those deeper sleep stages a lot quicker. Yes, we want those deep sleep stages. <laughs> Meryl, tell me about the hangover feeling the next day. Any of that? Well, the nice thing is because there's natural ingredients, you really won't have that hangover feeling. So you should wake up feeling rested and ready to start your day. Okay, I'm just gonna be <laughs> in my room. Uh, thank you both so much for coming in. Great, great tips here today. And if you wanna know more, log on to thebalancingact.com and we're also on Facebook and Twitter. talking gun safety this morning and I'm with champion target shooter Kippy Latham of Springfield Armory and we are here to answer viewer questions we received on Facebook. Welcome back. Thank you. It's great to be here. I'm glad you're here because let me tell you I've learned so much and great questions from two viewers. I picked them out. Listen to this one. I, I, I love this one. Amy from Detroit and thank you Amy for writing us. I've heard that firing a warning shot is a bad idea. Why? Well, in my opinion, firing a warning shot is irresponsible and dangerous. If you think back to our basic firearm safety rules, Olga, one of them was to know your target, its surroundings, what's behind it. And if you're not certain of your target, 
don't, don't shoot. shoot. I even remember that one. That's reason enough. Okay, another question from Shannon in Portland. Thank you, Shannon. Which firearm is the best for protection your, for protecting yourself, I should say, from intruders in your home? That's what I want to know. Well, purchasing a firearm is a very personal and thought-inducing decision. And the two firearms we have here, both of them are unloaded, uh, are from Springfield Armory. I prefer the XDM line. It has a grip safety, a trigger safety, a loaded chamber indicator. Those are all safety features that I personally am looking for in a gun. So that works for me in my environment. And that's what a woman needs to base that decision on, what she needs, what she wants. Some women may want a revolver, a semi-automatic, they may want a shotgun or a rifle for protection, and each has its pros and cons, so you just have to figure out what works for you. But what I love is when, when you check out what Springfield Armory has to offer, there's just so much. There is a variety that you should be able to find one to suit your needs. Okay, thank for you sure. so much. Thank you. We'll see you again for another tip. Excellent. All right, and again, thank you for writing and uh, giving us all those questions. We want some more questions from you because we'd love to answer them. So if you have any related questions to target shooting, let us know. Visit us on Facebook and The Balancing Act fans, or you can go always to our website, which is thebalancingact.com. Thanks so much for spending part of your morning with us. We hope you learned a little something. And remember, we've got lots more on our website, thebalancingact.com. Also, you could check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Just look us up. That would be Julie and Olga. There you go. Until the next time. <laughs> <laughs> remember to find your balance. We don't have any, but you find yours. So long, everybody. <laughs>